a world masterpiece that almost led to an artistic conflict between the East and the West. A work that almost deprived an outstanding master of his life. A tremendous deception that presented Kyiv with a shrine of world scale. St. Volodymyr's Cathedral. It survived the reign of six Kyiv metropolitans and the rule of four Russian czars. And this is only over the period of its creation. It brought together 96 artists who proposed different architectural concepts and the entire Kyiv public over the course of the 19th century. Being created under the pressure of constant scandals, it became a safe haven in which the Orthodox Church of Ukraine was born. The year 1884. In Kyiv, the reconstruction of the St. Cyril Church continued, the main designer of which was a young but talented artist of Danish-Polish origin named Mikhail Vrubel. And at the same time, in another part of the city, preparations for the painting of frescoes in the Volodymyr Cathedral on the Bibikovsky Boulevard were in full swing. One of the main images of the new shrine had to be the altarpiece of the Virgin Mary and her child Jesus Christ. It was planned to be executed by Viktor Vasnitsov. When the artist demonstrated his sketch to the head of the finishing works, he was speechless. In January 1885, before the start of the artwork, the artist Adrian Prokhov and Vice Governor Alexander Baumgarten, who headed the commission for the construction of the Volodymyr Cathedral, came to the construction site. The purpose of his visit was to discuss future murals of the main altar on the spot. When the art director looked up at the wall that had not yet dried up, he could not believe his eyes. He questioned the construction project manager whether he saw anything of the kind. Baumgarten replied that the image of the Virgin Mary holding the infant Jesus Christ in her arms was depicted. This could not possibly have been a simultaneous hallucination of the two artists. Then Prokhov took a piece of paper and a pencil and made a sketch of his vision of the way the image should look. Then both sides put their signatures on the sketch. But when Vasnitsov showed Prokhov his own sketch, it was clear that it was similar to the sketch created in January of that year. So then neither of the sides had any doubts. However, when the artistic work of the interior of the cathedral began, new problems arose. Besides from Viktor Vasnitsov, more than 90 people had to work on the paintings. Among them were the outstanding masters of the European school, the brothers Pavlo and Alexander Svidomsky, and Wilhelm Kotorbinsky. At that time, they lived in Rome. Wilhelm graduated from the Academy of Painting of St. Luke. Their style, or rather the style of Viktor Vasnitsov, was significantly different. The combination of such styles posed a threat that it would lead to a major artistic conflict between artists in the East and the West. For this very reason, Adrian Prokhov sent Viktor Vasnitsov on a special trip to Italy in order to give him the opportunity to become more familiar with the styles and nuances of European art. This very same story was repeated five years later. Every day, except on weekends and holidays, exactly at 10 o'clock in the morning, Viktor Vasnitsov was in the Volodymyr Cathedral. He worked very hard. The cathedral was heated poorly, and Vasnitsov often suffered from a common cold. The consequences of such inconvenient hard work were constant ailments. The artist's spine and neck suffered during the painting of the ceiling. Work at such a height almost led to the artist's death. Several times he fell down from the wood constructions, and one unfortunate day he was found on the floor unconscious. As it turned out, Vasnitsov fell from a 15-meter height onto the stone floor. Fortunately, he only suffered from a broken rib, and after a week, he started working again. Once being inspired by the work, the artist stumbled and fell from the dome of the cathedral. Only a miracle saved his life. He clung to a metal hook with his jacket. The painter said at the time, the Lord is my savior.
but constant illnesses and the incidents of falling from the scaffolds were not the only obstacles that hindered the master. Representatives of the supervisory committee constantly interfered in the work of designers, including Viktor Vasnetsov. Being mainly people that were far from the world of art, they tried to control painters and made claims to them. Often designers painted the already painted walls and ceiling. And by the end of the 1880s, another problem appeared. Adrian Prahov had already exceeded the initially negotiated value of the murals and the term of completion of two years. But even having exceeded the estimate several times and twice the term, he clearly understood that the work would not be completed by the deadline of 1894. However, he initially underestimated the estimates in order to not upset the construction committee. And using his connections, he always found new funding. But the same connections were powerless when it was connected with the process of painting. Adrian Prahov understood. Vasnitsov needed an assistant. The best was Mikhail Vrubel. He was assigned to develop a sketch of Christmas. And another painter, Valentin Serov, worked on the resurrection. But Serov was late in submitting of his sketch, and Vrubel's project was rejected by the commission. In 1890, Adrian Prahov met an assistant for Viktor Vasnitsov, a young man named Mikhail Nesterov, at the traveling exhibition. But Vasnitsov was against this cooperation, as the style of the young colleague was different from his own. Prahov decided that Nesterov would work on iconostasis in the choirs, and his works would not interfere with the works of Vasnitsov. It was only after that Mikhail Nesterov started working in the Volodymyr Cathedral. First, based on sketches by Viktor Vasnetsov, he got acquainted with the wall painting. On the pylons of the middle ship of the cathedral he wrote, Boris and Gleb. He quickly mastered the new technique for him and received an order for individual work. But he also faced some problems with the committee. They constantly found mistakes in his works and the painter had to rewrite images. On several occasions, Nesterov decided to give up this work. Prahov managed to reconcile both sides. And if in administrative matters he provided invaluable assistance to painters, then in the creative aspect and theme he was powerless. In preparing his sketches and murals, Vasnitsov took a de facto scientific approach. Before creating the image of Volodymyr the Great in the royal vestments and the Byzantine crown, he studied coins minted with the image of the Kiev prince. He read special literature, collected images of attire, the entourage, the faces of saints, and consulted with art historians, scholars, and theologians working on other subjects. But all this didn't help in solving the main task right in the central plot of the cathedral, the altarpiece of the Virgin Mary. At that time, the Sistine Madonna by Raphael Santi was already known in the whole world. It was almost impossible to make this masterpiece better and to make it similar. It was an exercise in futility. He needed some kind of his own image, which would be different from Raphael's, but at the same time wouldn't look pathetic on his background. Once he saw his wife Alexandra with his newborn son Mikhail in her arms, the little boy stretched forward, as if he was holding the world with his little arms. And the painter decided that this was the way to depict the Virgin Mary and the child, simple and unconstrained. He drew the movement of his son's hands, his facial expression, and the expression of his spouse's face. Although it must be said that there was no similarity to a portrait in these works. Work on the central plot continued for two years. Viktor Vasnitsov produced 15 large paintings and 30 portraits images on the central nave, the main spaces of the choirs and massive columns that discerned the central naves from the lateral naves. In general, the artistic image of the Volodymyr Cathedral was predetermined by Viktor Vasnitsov and Mikhail Nesterov. The younger colleague worked on two large paintings, the Nativity of Christ and the Resurrection of Christ. 
the works were the Epiphany and sixteen figures on the four iconostases of the lower and upper altars. But the first stage of work was accompanied only by tensions between Nesterov and the committee, and the further work was marked by a major scandal. In the winter of 1893, having received an order for images in the two side iconostases of the main altar, the artist traveled abroad for studies. He brought sketches, among which was the great martyr Barbara. Adrian Prahov liked this image most of all. He depicted her on her knees holding a sword. But the positions of Nesterov and the head of painting were not approved by the supervisory committee. After all, after the committee saw the sketches, a major scandal arose. The Kiev priesthood was not too fond of the exalted icon and required its artist to redraw the sketch. The artist fulfilled the requirement. After that, an even greater scandal arose. One day, the wife of the governor-general, Countess Sophia, came to the cathedral. Looking at the icon of St. Barbara, she recognized the daughter of Adrian Prahov. Nesterov, who had fallen in love with the young lady, painted an icon with her. But the countess came and said with indignation, I do not have the will or strength to pray in front of this icon with the image of Elena Prahova. The artist then returned to Kiev and repainted the image. In the end, on August 20, 1896, in the presence of the royal family, officials, the clergy, the Metropolitan consecrated the St. Volodymyr Cathedral. The masters who worked on the paintings were presented to the Tsar. The uniting of different artistic styles into a single holistic and harmonious picture not only with icons and subjects on religious or historical themes, but also decorative ornaments, was quite an amazing phenomenon. From the first days of its existence, the Volodymyr Cathedral became the favorite temple of Kyiv citizens, especially the youth. It is not surprising that the regular visitors were students of St. Volodymyr's University, which today is known as the Kyiv Taras Shevchenko University. Almost from the first days of its existence, the cathedral became a stronghold of Ukrainian independence. On March 19, 1917, the memory of Taras Shevchenko was honored here. After the solemn service, the crowd of many thousands of people went to the monument to Bogdan Khmelnytsky, one of the first national rallies in Ukraine, where people demanded for Ukrainian independence was held here. With the occupation of Ukraine by the Bolsheviks, the dark days began for the Church in general and for the St. Volodymyr's Cathedral in particular. The new government persecuted priests, impeded the holding of church masses, stole from the cathedral religious items and, of course, other valuables. First and foremost, sacred relics of precious metals attracted the attention of the communists. Representatives of the country removed all the bells from the cathedral and banned their heating, which resulted in the destruction of paintings preserved inside. This continued until 1929, when the cathedral was closed for good. Then the All-Ukrainian Central Executive Committee decided to turn the temple into an anti-religious propaganda museum. For some time there were archival funds of local authorities and then the library of the Pedagogical Institute, and in the second half of the 1930s the Bolsheviks decided to turn Kyiv into an industrial city. The city authorities planned to build the main thoroughfare for revolutionary demonstrations. In order to build it, the cathedrals of St. Volodymyr, St. Sophia and St. Michael's Golden Domed Cathedral were placed on the list for destruction. The monument to Bogdan Khmelnytsky was more fortunate, as there were plans to simply move it to another location. Only a miracle saved the Kyiv Sophia Cathedral and the St. Volodymyr Cathedral from the fate of many Kyiv churches, among them was the St. Michael's Golden Domed Cathedral. The revival of spiritual life in the St. Volodymyr's Cathedral is associated with the name, which is directly related to the restoration of historical justice and the acquisition of Ukrainian autocephaly.
In 1966, the Metropolitan Filaret Denisenko headed the Kiev Galician metropolis. After that, the spiritual life in the St. Volodymyr's Cathedral considerably changed. In addition to church services, which since 1944 have been held only with the permission of the authorities, sacraments of baptism, weddings and ceremonial services dedicated to Orthodox holidays have been held there. With the formation of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Kiev Patriarchate, the Volodymyr Cathedral became its main church, and from December 15, 2018, it was designated as the main church of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine.